If we have a set of fields and we want to group them together as a class, it is rather simple. All we need to do is create a blank line above the set of fields and type in class and then the name of the class that we want to create. Unlike variable names, class names should always begin with a capital letter. Python will let you begin a class name with a small letter, but it's not advised. All right, we want to create a class for our character. I'm going to call it character. And then I'm going to finish that with a colon. Optionally, you can also have parentheses in here. This will become more important later on. I'm going to go ahead and put in the parentheses here. And then I'm going to tab in each of the different fields that I want to have associated with my character. This class now tells me what a character should look like. And if I want to, I can pass in then just a field that represents the individual character. This makes things a whole lot easier, but there's still a little bit more to it than I need to explain in order to be able to work with a character. What I've got right now on these lines one through six defines what a character can be, but I don't yet have a character. It's like telling someone what a human is, but without having a human yet created. In order to create a character, I need a variable that will point to it. I'm going to call this my dude. Then I can set an equal sign. Now I need to create a new instance of character. In order to do that, all I have to do is type in the class name. and then open close parentheses. The open close parentheses are necessary. You can't leave them out. This creates a new instance of the character and my dude will basically point to that particular instance of the character. By default, all of those fields up there are set to what I've got inside of that class character. If I wanted to set the name to something different, I can do my dude dot name equals Sally. I can set my dude, I can set the sex to female, and I can give him some extra hit points. All right, again, to review, right here, this lists all of the fields, also known as the attributes of the class that I'm defining. This is the name of the class. And once I've done this, I have not, again, created any characters yet. All I've done is tell the computer what a character is. This creates an instance of the class. Also known as an object. An object is an instance of the class. Like Bob is an instance of a human. Sally is an instance of a human. Fred is an instance of a human. The class would be human and the particular instance in this case would be Bob, Sally, or Fred. This is simply a variable that points to that particular instance of the object. It is important that you remember that it points to it. It doesn't actually end up being that particular object. Later on, when we talk about references, we'll show how that's important. When you want to set individual fields, out of that object or refer to them, you use this, which is called the dot operator. We've had operators for plus, minus. The dot operator lets us go into an object and pull out individual fields or attributes of that object and either refer to them or set them to something new. When working with classes, you must have a class name in front of any particular instance of a field. This works, but it doesn't set the fields in the particular object. What I've done is create brand new variables called name, sex, and max hit points, and they have nothing to do with the character. 
you must put in which particular character you're talking about. In this case, the character pointed to by my dude. If I were to take this out and put in character, this doesn't work either. This is like saying, human's name is Sally. And then the computer's going to say, what human's name is Sally? Because there could be five, six, ten humans. There might not be any humans. You have to tell the computer exactly what human you're talking about and in particular the human that you've created that is currently being pointed to by the variable called my dude. If you want to call a function, in this case I'm going to need to move this function up here. All right, now I've got the class character and I've created a function. If I want to refer to name, sex, max hit points, current hit points, remember, just like before, I need to put in my character, which is going to be the variable name that points to the human that we're talking about, and then I need to use the dot operator to get the name out of that character. And I can just put that in front of each one of these. So that line's getting long. Let's hit next to return here. Now I'm telling it I want to go to the my character variable and fetch out the field name, the sex name, the max hit point name, and the current hit point name. Then when I call it down here, I can do display character and pass it my dude. In this case, it will take the character that I've created, the fields that I've set, call the display character function, and print out those items. Let's go ahead and run it, see if I made any mistakes. And it works. It printed out Sally, that it was female, max hit points, and current hit points. This makes it easy. If I wanted to add a new field, such as how much armor a person has, then all I need to do is add in and that's it. It'll automatically be passed to display character. I would need to add in here display character if I wanted to print it out, but everywhere I've got the function called, it's automatically going to point pass that data along so that it'll be available to me. Classes make this a whole lot easier to work with when you're dealing with quite a few attributes about a particular object. Another nice thing is that if you're working with quite a few different characters, all you need to do is, for instance, create a his dude equals character. And now I've got a second character with all those same fields created. And then when I call the display character function, it's going to know which data to pass along. In this case, I've got two objects. This creates object one. This constructs object two. I know that I'm setting the name of object two because I've got the reference for object two here. If instead I had done my dude, it would have set Sally's name to Bob instead. This tells me to print all the fields of my dude, and this tells me to print all the fields of his dude. Therefore, if I have a networked game and I'm having multiple players in my game, it is really easy to create another instance of all of those attributes about the object that I'm working with, and in order to keep them straight, all I need are two variable names, and then I can go to that variable name and fetch out each of the fields for either that guy's character or my character.